Fire. Air. Water. Earth. Hey guys, and welcome back. So this is part three of the House of Bending tutorial series. So today's episode will cover water. Now this one is mixed everything. There's mixed offense, mixed defense. Mobility is really interesting. Now if you are in water or next to water, this element is amazing. It is the choice for you. Or if you live in a forest or on a plain where you pl have plenty of leaves and trees and grass because these are all... Uh, source blocks that you can use to bend as you can see I'm able to use the grass I think you can also use flowers yeah you can use flowers and leaves as well as just water you can also use ice so if you're gonna live in like a snow biome this would work and you can use snow blocks that are on the ground so let's go ahead and let's get started off with this oh yeah and another passive but I'll show you guys that one in just a minute so the first passive of water bending is that if you are in water and if you have an ability that does not have a shifting function or or if you are just in a unbound slot so say right here slot 2 is clear if you hold shift you will do this pretty much super quick swimming thing where you just will dash forward it's kinda like the equivalent of how airbenders get extra sprinting speed only now you get extra swimming speed so it definitely is fun and something good to have so let's start off with uh, healing waters. Now, lightning is going to be uh, shooting us with a bow, and I will show you guys this ability. So, just to go ahead and tell you how it works, whenever you either are inside of water, standing there, or if you have either a water bucket or a water bottle inside of whatever slot this is. So, for me, it would be slot one, as you can see up top. If I held a water bottle or anything like that inside my hand, it would heal me. So I will go ahead and have lightning shoot me. Come on. Oh my gosh. Okay, apparently that bow is really, really strong. So uh, I'm going to find my way back to him and I will let you guys, or I will see you guys whenever I get there. Okay, guys, so we are back. Um, apparently that bow was a lot, a lot stronger than I was expecting it to, so we decided instead he would just hit me with an axe for this ability, so let's go ahead and let's see how this will work out. So, okay, uh, let's, okay, that was a lot more damage than I was planning on, so I will go ahead and show you guys. So, as you can tell, I'm shifting with a water bottle in the slot of healing waters. You can tell I have the regeneration effect down there. Right there, regeneration two. Let's try it again. I have another water bottle waiting for us. Now, the uh, amount of how long it'll last with each water bottle is different. It is not guaranteed. So we used up all three. Let's also have him hit us again so I can show you that this does work out with a water bucket. Okay. Well, I'm inside the water right now, so I'll just go ahead and show you. It is working because we are in water. Now, also, this ability will clear you of status effects that are damaging, such as poison. I have learned that before. So let's have him hit us one last time. Okay. Let's get out of the water. So I will show you. As you can tell, it kind of has those water particle effects around us. Although I do not want to use up that bucket. And here's the other fun part. So let's see. My turn to beat up lightning. Okay, so the fun ability or the fun thing for this is that if you are with an ally and they are in water, if you are shifting with this ability while looking at them, you see how there's like all the bubbles and stuff and all the water splashing off them, you actually can give them regeneration too to heal up your ally. So this is really, really useful if you are in survival and you're going around with a group of people. If, say, you guys got ambushed by mobs and you needed to heal up some of your team, you could easily use this to help them out. So that is the first part of this. Now next up we have a move called Water Spout. So this is sort of like Air Spout. Uh, if you left click while you are above water or snow or ice, just a water bendable block, uh, doesn't work on grass or leaves, sadly, I know I wish it would, uh, then you just create this little tiny spout. Now, at nighttime, water bending moves are more effective and fire bending moves are less effective. So at nighttime, actually, you can go even higher on your water spout than normal. Right now, it caps off here. I think at nighttime, it'd go another like 10 blocks higher or something. It's interesting. It actually makes it taller than air spout or uh, any of the other spouts, such as sand spout. And I'll show you guys that one in the earthbending episode that is after this. 
So the second ability, or the second part of Water Spout, is if you left click on a source block, and then you hold down shift, you see how this little tiny bit of water starts going around you. Whenever you release it, the water will come behind you and it will propel you, as you saw just then. Now let's try that one more time. There we go. Oh, my bad. Let me show you this. So this also works with water source blocks such as ice, leaves right here as you just now saw, or grass. So this one can be used for like traversing a forest or a plane. If you are d just don't want to run, you can easily use this to get around. Now next up we have another utility uh, ability called wake fishing. This one is extremely good, especially if you're going to partner up with a firebender. Because firebenders, uh, I don't think I actually showed this in their video. And so I'm going to probably have to go back and redo part of it in a later on version. But with heat control, the firebending ability heat control, if you hold down shift while having a um, an uncooked food in that slot it'll cook it so with wake fishing you hold down shift while looking at a water source block and it'll fish as you can see they are only clownfish there we go they are coming out right now perfect there we go I think that is it <clears throat> So after this, we have an ability called sh Surge. So this one, if you shift click, oh, it's because we have water bottles. Let's go and let's drink this water bottle. It's getting it's a little bit confused, and we'll just stack those up. So with Surge, if you shift click a water source block and then left click, you just shoot out this wave. And now we'll show this part on lightning. Uh, if you shoot a wave, let's see if this will actually work on somebody. And then if you hit shift again before it hits them, it'll actually freeze them in ice. Then to unfreeze them, you just have to tap shift again, and it'll recall the water back to you. I'm going to go and get rid of these bottles and just give them to lightning. Get those out of my inventory. Now, the next part of this ability is if you left-click a source block, and if you hold down shift, you create this wave that you can use to actually help you deflect projectiles coming at you from enemies. So this one is useful. Now at nighttime, like I said, water bending abilities are more effective, and the wave will actually be bigger than it is now, both in shield mode and in launching mode. Next up, we have an ability called Water Bubble. You guys remember Air Bubble? Same exact thing, only at nighttime, it gets a lot bigger. Same exact thing, you know, just hold down shift to activate it, release shift, it's done. You can still mine and build and everything while you are using it, so do not forget that part. It's very useful for building stuff underwater. Next up, we have an ability called Water Manipulation. This one is a lot of fun. This is the one that you can use to deal basic damage. And also, if you left-click uh, continuously while it's in action, it'll actually follow your cursor, as you can tell how I am moving around and bending it. And now I just look, and I'm not actually left-clicking. You see it does not follow my cursor at all. Now, this one torrent here is a two-part ability. If you left-click a source block and hold down Shift, again, this little tiny thing will go around you this water now if you release shift it'll send out this wave that'll blast enemies away very very useful I think lightning went all the way over there yep okay he went ahead and air blasted back okay the other part of this is if you left click a water source block and hold down shift but then you left click and it will shoot out this little tiny uh, row of water now this one will follow your cor your cursor and another fun part about this one, as you guys probably saw in some of my other videos, is that if you are left-clicking and it hits an enemy, it will once again freeze upon impact of the ground. And now after this, we have a move called Octopus Form. So you left-click a water source block, and then you hold down Shift. And this thing right here will appear around you, uh, would look like tentacles, and you just left-click and oh yeah, also the other fun part about this, it'll turn water blocks that you are walking on to ice. Now this one has a lot of melee damage, it's good for say you are being surrounded by a lot of mobs and you need to keep some mobs away from you. I don't know why that's not hitting him here, let's have him walk closer to us. Uh, there we go, okay now it's working. So it has to be close range with this ability, although it does do decent damage. It's really good for if you're getting surrounded, you can just hit back enemies. Pretty easy. Then just release shift whenever you're done. Uh, next up, we have this ability called Maelstrom. Now, this one is used on water. You just left-click, and it'll create this whirlpool. Now, the deeper the water, actually, the bigger the whirlpool will be. It traps enemies and pulls them in. I'm going to use Water Spout now to get into the deeper part of the water, uh, right about here. And let's try this again. 
Just watch, and this time the Whirlpool will get a lot bigger. I think it gets us one more block. No, that's as deep as it'll get. But that can be very, very good for if you are in water and somebody is following you. Just activate that behind you, stop them in their tracks, and then you can keep on speeding away using your, quicking, your quick swimming ability. Uh, I will be right back in just a bit. There is also... So I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but inside of water bending, you also have a subsection for ice bending and a subsection for plant bending, which is, which is separate from water bending. There also are two moves, blood bending and water arms. They are for donators only, so I will show them at the end of the rest of this episode after ice and plants, just so that way I can show you. And once again, just remind you that those are for donators only. You can donate for it. It is extremely useful, especially with mobs. Water arms is actually a lot of fun to use. Part of it's a little bit bugged right now, but they are working on that. And I will see you guys here in just a bit with more... Uh with the rest of the water bending moves. Hey guys and welcome back. These are the next eight water bending abilities. So the top six are actually ice bending technically and the last two are plant bending. So to start off, this ability right here that is bound to slot number six is phase change. Now if you left click on water, it'll turn it into ice. If you shift click on ice, it'll turn it into water. Also, right now it's a little bit buggy, but if you shift click on water, it will evaporate it, make it no more. There is currently no function to make water appear out of air, although that would be really, really awesome if you ask me. Now, let's start back up here at the top. So, Ice Blast. You shift-click at a ice block, and then you left-click, and it will shoot at this little tiny block of ice. Now, this will damage your opponent as well as give them slowness 3. So, if you are chasing after somebody, I would highly, highly, Highly recommend using this because it will make them slow down a lot to where you can catch up to them and use this fun ability. So the next ability I was talking about was Ice Claws. Now this one does not need a source block. All you have to do is just hold down shift, this orb will appear, and then whenever you punch somebody it deals extra damage as well as it gives them slowness 4. So this one really, really, really does slow down your enemies. Apparently all my punching has made him need to eat some more. Now next we have an ability called Ice Spike that will actually need him to go onto the ice. So let's make some ice for him. Uh, face change. Here we go. So this ability is useful with water, but also its sole function is on ice. So now, if he is standing over here on the ice, you left-click at the enemy, and poof, this spike of ice will jump up and hit him. Now, currently, there is a secondary function that's not working, where if you tap shift, multiple ice spikes will shoot up from the ice around you and hit multiple enemies. I do not know why that's not working. Now, the last part is if you shift-click a water block, and then you launch an enemy with a left-click, then it will shoot out an ice block, and it will damage them, but but it only gives them slowness one. So if you're trying to slow an enemy, I would still recommend the move of Ice Blast. Now next up we have Ice Wall. So this one works on both water and ice. All you have to do is just shift click, and ta-da, a little tiny wall to help deflect. Then if you hit shift again on it, it'll shatter and damage any enemies that are nearby it. But be warned, because an enemy waterbender can use their ice wall and break your ice wall before you do, and it'll hurt you. So whoever breaks it is the one that does not take damage. Anybody else will, including yourself, even if you are the one who summoned it. So be warned. Now next we have Frost Breath. If you guys remember Fire Breath and Air Breath, you just have to hold down shift, and the enemy will be frozen. Pretty simple. Um, that's about it. I'm just going to go ahead and melt some of this ice if I can. Now, let's get lightning to give us back some of those water bottles. There we go. Okay, so next up we have an ability called Plant Drain. Now, this one is a lot of fun. This one's useful in deserts, plains, and forests, especially if you have water bottles, because it'll take water out of surrounding plants and it'll refill water bottles and I think water buckets as well. Yes, it'll, it will refill buckets to give you water buckets. Now, the reason why this works a lot in the desert is because the dead brush inside the desert as well as the cacti will work as sources for you to suck water out of. As you see, we've already filled up nine water bottles. Let's fill up the rest. That way I can show you the other function of this. Or no, I'll just give uh, lightning here, the empty ones. And a couple of the full ones I'll put inside my inventory. 
So now if you hold down shift, as you can tell, this little tiny bit of water starts to form up in front of you. And then you can left click it, and it works basically like water manipulation where it'll just damage an enemy. So pretty much this one allows you to not have to use water manipulation, although I would. You just instead have to drain the nearby water from plants, and then it works like a water manipulation. Now lastly, we have an ability called Plant Armor. Uh, in the next episode, you guys will see Earth Armor for Earthbenders. This is basically the exact same thing. All you have to do is just left-click a plant or a leaf block, and you will get Leather Armor with a Oak Leafs as your head, and you get also, yes, Resistance. It is a pretty much solely defensive ability. It's useful, very, very useful, especially since Waterbenders always have mixed defense. Once again, just left click a block, you will get leather armor and oak leaves. Very, very useful. So I will see you guys in just again to show you the blood bending and the water arms, and then we will have ourselves the three water combos that are all extremely fun. I say three, I believe there is a fourth one, but currently it's bugged. I can show you how to do it, but nothing will actually work from it. Just a forewarning. Okay guys, and we are back with the water combos being the first seven slots equipped and then the blood bending and the water arms back here are the last ones. So to use blood bending, now this works on both players and mobs. I'm just going to use on lightning right now. So you look at them, you hold down shift, and you can then throw them a distance. This also works where you can throw them straight up to make them take fall damage. So this is very, very useful against water benders and fire benders. Not so much on earthbenders because if they land on an earthbendable block then they do not take fall damage and airbenders never take fall damage. So just a forewarning with that much. Again, bloodbending and water arms are donator moves so just be careful. Now water arms. With this one, you just have to shift click on a water source block and this is what you get. You only have these three right now. Grapple where you just left click and if your arms hit a block you will get launched towards them. Next up we have punch where you can deal a whole bunch of damage to an enemy. Let's see if I can get over here to lightning in time because it does have a cooldown. And then pull. You actually can pull your enemy towards you. There you go. Like I said, uh, grab, freeze, and spear right now are not working. I do not know why. I think they may have some issues with the configs. I'm going to try my best to figure out and get those to be fixed soon if possible. This is just really, really fun. Okay, so now we are done with that. Now let's start off with doing the first combo. Now the first combo, let me look up the name of it because I am blanking out, is called... Ooh, Ice Wave. So this one, it's interesting. So basically, we are going to be using Water Spout and Phase Change, the very top two. So you left click a Water Source Block with Water Spout. And then what you do is you activate your wave, your uh, the one that propels you forward. Then you switch to phase change and you just left click. And it turns it into ice instead of water that is trailing behind you. So you can see down there, once again, uh, it said ice wave. Remember the dotted line will appear and then the name with the line through it. Let's try that again just to show you. So you left click the block, hold down shift, you release shift to use the water wave, and then you left click with phase change, and it turns into ice. Now this will also damage anyone that has been picked up inside of that uh, water wave. So next up, we have a move called Ice Bullet. Now this is the one that is currently not working, sadly. So with this one, we're going to be using Water Bubble, which is our 3, and Ice Blast, which is our 4. So you tap shift with Water Bubble, you hold shift with Ice Blast, then you uh, left click with Ice Blast once. Now let's do this all in rapid unison, or as rapid as we can. So tap shift, hold shift, left click. There we go. Now in order for this to work, you're supposed to be able to left and right click and it will shoot off many, many Ice Blasts in whatever you're directing. You alternate left clicking and right clicking to make it rapid fire as you guys saw. Nothing was happening because it is currently bugged. Now next up we have a move called Water Flow. You guys may have seen this in one of my uh, Battleground episodes that I think will actually be coming out after this. So you will see this in my Battleground episode. This one is a lot of fun. You control enemies with it really, really easy. It also is a good way for you to move around if you are next to water. So you will be, just to explain it, tapping shift with water manipulation, tapping shift with torrent, 
holding shift with torrent, and then without releasing shift, you switch back to water manipulation, and then you will release it. So let's try that again. So tap, tap, hold, switch, release. Now as you see, we create this little tiny wave that then you can pick up other enemies or other people with. Lightning's not really an enemy. And if you look, there he goes. And that one is a lot of fun. Now this one is pretty much like a torrent, although, well, you'll see what's different. So with this one, it is called Water Gimbal. So you're going to tap shift twice on a water source block with torrent, and then you're going to hold it with octopus form. So let's try that. So tap, tap, hold. As you see, these two little tiny rings of water will shoot around you. Now these can be used for defensive purposes, like if another enemy hits you, it will actually block it. However, you left click and it fires one ring. You left click again and it fires the other. That is water gimbal. So that is the extent of water bending. Uh, next up, we will have earth bending and then chi. Chi blocking is how you actually would say it. Chi blocking is a lot of fun. It is strictly melee, uh, melee fighting, so that one is fun. They do have two ranged abilities, smoke screen and dagger throw, but I'm going to go into more detail with that during the actual chi bending episode. I'll try not to take up this one. So once again, water bending, mixed offense, mixed defense, a lot stronger at night. And you can shift when in water to get the super swimming ability. A lot, a lot of fun. Till then, I will see you guys next time.